For the dog. You already know what it is. I was born in Pontiac, Michigan. Raised on the north side, right off Baldwin on Kennet. I'm the middle child. And I'm the nice baby goat. You feel me? Damn, we just pulled a five. What time is it? Drop a parking in the limousine. I'm high as shit. Got your bitch doing freaky things. It wasn't hard growing up in Pontiac. It was just... The struggle was real, you know, I was staying in shelters with my mom and shit, but my pops always had a job, so I always had somewhere to lay my head. I really just rocked with my moms because that's my mom's, but no, nah, you know, I mean, it's real out here, but it wasn't that hard for me, for sure. My mom and dad was split up, and my mom was going her separate ways with my, for my dad, and um, so... I mean, I was young, bro. I was young, like, literally probably, like, in the second, third grade. So, as a kid, I I, I, I ain't know the struggle was real. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, because at the time, you know, we they had, like, programs there, you know. So, it was like, I ain't know we was in a real struggle like that. My dad was a gym worker, so we always had what we need. My mom was just always in the streets. He was taking care of my mom. He was willing to take care of my mom, but she was going to suffer, you know, going her ways. So, you know, it never was hard for me. You know, I always had whatever I want, you feel me? But he always let me know that, you know, this shit ain't free, you feel me? She was on drugs and stuff, you feel me? She was in the streets, you feel me? It was this one time that, you know, like, my God, it was in my song for real. Like, my mom, you know, she used to leave with me and my little brother in cars and shit when she go out her business. And, you know, she literally, I don't know if she will forget about us or it just that, that, you know, she was that addicted to the point that she needed it. I didn't know what was going on, but it was time. My dad uh, came and got me and my brother, and we went pulled tight on my mom and he explained to me what, what what she was on and what was you know what I'm saying and, uh, and that's when I finally found out what, what was going on like what she was doing they didn't really hit me for real cause I was a kid until I got to seeing her later on like seeing the effect of her how she looked and all that and then that's when it start hitting the nigga like what the fuck you know what I'm saying for sure then you know it was just real. Well, growing up on the north side, man, it was always something to do, you know. And it was like, you know, I was always playing basketball, you know what I'm saying? I was in the games, you know what I'm saying? I was always real into music. At that time, you know, we had CD players. So we had to go to the mall and grab CDs, you know. It was really, you know, at that time, BET had music videos. Like, he had commercials and let us know what. CD came out and all that. We really ain't had the internet, so, you know, like, it was pretty fun growing up in Pontiac, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just, just, you know, like, leaving the house and walking around the neighborhood, finding friends, you know, like, going to school, finding friends. It was always fun like that. We ain't had cell phones, so we really had to leave the crib and go find a friend or go find a girl, however, you know what I'm saying, give them my house phone number, so. It was pretty fun growing up in Pontiac, especially in the hood, for sure. Mm -hmm. Elementary, I went to Walt Whitman first. Third grade. Uh, then I went to Elkhart, fourth and fifth. Then I went to Lincoln all three years. Then I went to Central from freshman to 11th grade because I dropped out. But uh, at elementary, I was, you know, just a... Cool dude, middle school. I was, that's when I hopped off the porch. So, I was thugging. You feel me? Skipping school, doing all that other shit. You know what I'm saying? High school, you know, it was. I was a ladies' man then. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really a class clown type of nigga, but I, I, I really ain't attend to school for real. I ain't gonna cap to y'all. So yeah, my attendance grades, all that was fucked up. I really hopped off the porch after my mom passed. I'm going to say that was like seventh grade. Pulling up on Lincoln, though, man. Going over there, seeing what type of time they was on, man. We want to do that shit. So that's when I hopped off the porch after my mom passed. Then it was up from there. It was 03, 04, around there. And I was 12 years old when she passed. My mom had cancer. 
I lost to the cancer. Uh, it ain't really hit me till after she passed, because she passed in my room. And then when I got home from school and seen her, that's when it hit me. And when I realized, like, oh, shit, you feel me? Uh, it affected me for damn near a couple months because I didn't want to go to school, none of that shit. But I ain't get over it. I'm still not over it. But, you know, I just... It's just dying down on me that she gone and there ain't nothing else they can do about it. So, yeah, it's cool though. I was staying with my dad already. Uh, when she was sick, going through the motions, he kept her at the at my at his house. So, I was already with my pops. You know what I'm saying? There's when them times we were staying at the shelters, I always was. I was cool. Like I could, I could have stayed in the hood, but I just wasn't about to leave my mama. Like I don't go fuck. I was riding with her, whatever struggle I was with her. I got two brothers and one sister, man. One sister. One of my brothers got locked up in '97. He he had got out in '07. So in them two years span, I was with my sister. In ten years span, I was with my sister. My sister taught me damn near everything from grinding to cooking to. Watching these niggas, how they act, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, my little brother, you know, he had a different pops. So, he always used to be with his dad. But my pops used to always, my pops took care of him, too, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? He took him under his wing, even though that wasn't his real son. You know what I'm saying? So, little bro was always around. I, mean, I grew up listening to Hot Boys, man. They really, like, the, like how they was... Rapping, how they look, it just all made sense. That's why I really liked it, that shit. Liked it, they swag. Music always, that was always my go-to. I never thought I was going to be a rapper, you know what I'm saying? But I, that was just always something I went to. I love music. I used to love rap. My dad used to trip on me about that shit because he used to be like, that's all you know. Yeah, you feel me? That's what get me through in life, you know, or whatever. I knew I was going to be that when I got hip to the rhyme and shit and knew how to, you feel me? I knew I was going to be that nigga for sure. First flow, first first time I re- ever recorded from 05, I remember that, like it was yesterday, man, that nigga Depp, Free Depp, that nigga Depp made me mad as fuck one day. I don't know what the fuck he said, but I remember I went to my pops and I told him like, Nigga, like, I need like thirty dollars. I want to go to the studio. He gave that shit to me, and we went to the booth and we dropped some hard shit. I still remember my verse and everything. And ever since then, uh, I just they stopped doing that shit. I just kept going. That was oh five. That's facts. I was like oh five. It was called Rep Your City, Rep Your Side, man. That shit was dope too. And we had wrote it off that crime mob beat, knuck, knuck if you buck. But we ended up getting an original beat. You know what I'm saying? We had somebody not remake the beat, but like the same breakdown. It had the same breakdown, same tempo, same uh, time frame. You know what I'm saying? We all did eight bars. That was uh, the first time I went to the bull. You know what I'm saying? So it was so crazy. He didn't even know I did a song. Like he gave me the money, but. I told him, I told him, like, they gave me the money for something else. And he gave it to me, but he, I remember he asked me, like, what the hell you do with that $30? I'm young, so I ain't got nothing to show for it. He like, what the fuck you do with that? I'm like, I did a song. I'm like, I'm here. He like, boy, you all something else. I ain't cussing either. Only thing I said was nigga. I couldn't. I'm 14, you feel me? That shit was dope, though, for sure. So my first CD I made was called... 90s baby and how i got it out i had bought a whole bunch of blank cds at this time you know we was burning cds writing our names on them you know what i'm saying we was burning cds like cd like one at a time so it used to be all day but um yeah that's how i used to put my music out bro i used to just burn a whole bunch of cds bro like a 200 hundred dollar cds nigga. I mean, 100, 100, 200, 100 CDs and sell them bitches for like $5 a pop, for sure. Then I had to update, you know. We ain't got CD updated. We ain't got the CD, like my, like a cover on the CD. 
you know, updated it when it did that. Then we updated it again and got to making CDs with, with you know, CD covers and cases and all that type of shit. Our first rap name was Lil' Key Dog. Uh, I got that name from my brother. My oldest brother, that was his name, and all his friends just called me Lil' Key Dog, so I ran with that. That's when I used to rap with Fresh and all them, on the, you know, Dap and all them in 05. Uh, then when I got to high school, I used to shoot dice a lot, and I used to be hitting them niggas, bro. So I always kept money on me, like, kept money on me, like. And I always used to just pass them. Like, I had a girlfriend, a little high school sweetheart at the time, and she had friends. I used to always just pass them dollars every other day and shit. And that's what they just started calling me Key Money. Like, that's what that came about. The Key Money part. And the 90s baby, GOAT. 90s baby, Mr. 90s baby, that just came because I was the first nigga in high school that had 90s baby tatted on his wrist. On him, period. I was like 15, 16. So I just labeled myself that, you know what I'm saying, like the 90s baby nigga, the original 90s baby, you feel me, of Pontiac. Kev got the popping, what, like 06, you know what I'm saying, 07, he really got the popping. It wasn't like a nigga just got in the mix of it, you know what I'm saying. Kev Cutter, you know what I'm saying, he was already from my hood. I knew Kev before with all that rapping shit, and me and Leek was already doing music. Like, man, before all this NWO shit, we used to be real separated in my hood, bro. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, Cutter really just put a stamp, like, man, fuck all that, nigga, we all in one. The whole strip, the whole ball strip from Princeton to motherfucking Kimball, nigga. That's what it is, NWO, and niggas just rocked with it, because, you know what I'm saying, he got to doing the music shit, got to popping it, it got to sounding good, it was really, like, making us an image, like, you know what I'm saying, like, it was dope, bro, like, our, our, our lane, like, our whole swag was just dope as fuck, like, he made it look like we really was, you know, it was dope, but that's how I emerged in the NWO shit, what it really emerged into it was just, I was already claiming the north side. Me personally, you know, cutting them was older than me, so it wasn't like I was there or nothing like that. It was just like the motivation part, like the influence part, like, oh bet, what? These my bros. Hell yeah, I'm that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh they rapping too? Alright, let me try it. You know what I'm saying? Let me let me see if I can you know what I'm saying? It was already so it wasn't like really a nigga merging in. I'm original, so I really ain't had to do none of that, you know what I'm saying, merge into it, because the niggas who started was already my niggas, you know what I'm saying, I'm the youngest out the clique, for real, like, that shit really means something when I be saying that shit, like, when I be putting, when we be putting that original shit in front of it, like, we, that shit really be mean to something, bro, like, because when Kev came out, man, a lot of niggas got to hopping on our bandwagon, man, real heavy, you know what I'm saying, so we just, we made sure niggas know who is the originators and who ain't. When I first heard Kev rap, I been heard him rap back in like 05 with my nigga Sai and Bad News and shit. I been heard bro rap with Jay Hustle and shit. But when he first took off, when I first really heard him and it caught my ear, it was it, it fucked me up because like, damn, I mean, I see this nigga every day. I'm all the way on the west side, east side. These niggas listening to this nigga, and he's screaming, my set. You feel me? These niggas know about my hood. Before Cub was rapping, niggas ain't, niggas know about the hood, but they ain't really come over there. They ain't really, you know what I'm saying? But I remember Lil Bro and Grease, Freedom Boys with Lil Bro home, but Free Grease. I remember they pulled up on me. They let me listen to that, that north side anthem, man. And then let me listen to that uh, that loyal. You ain't loyal. And when I heard that, I was like, "Damn, that's cut." What? Fuck me up, like what? Then I remember going back. We was on the east side at the time, and we're going back to the hood and just seeing everybody listening to that shit, bro. Then he finally pulled up on me, and I'm like, "Damn, you popping like that?" You know what I'm saying? It was fun. It was, I felt good, and that's what really motivated me to rap. It felt good to uh, say that I got some a movement that I started, a movement that I started, and it's and it's and niggas fucking with it. Like 
But niggas who claim it really from over there, it ain't like just some niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kennet, for those who don't know, West Kennet Ave is a street. That's off Baldwin. I wasn't raised on that street. We was just raised off. The, we was raised on the streets that was off that street. But it felt good to be the originator of that swag, that whole little brand, man. Cause it's popping right now. Like we really got some monsters over there that's going crazy with the rap shit. And it feel good to say like I'm the OG. You know what I'm saying? I was 20 when I went to Ohio. Yeah, that was 2011 when I left. It was a struggle. Like I said, I feel like I had a target on my back end. You know what I'm saying? And my cousins and them was coming back, nigga, pulling up big trucks on eights and sixes and shit. So I just, man, what's up? I need parts. They're like, let's go. You know what I'm saying? I hopped in the whip, told sis, see you when I see you. You feel me? Went down there and made history. I was geeked. I was happy as hell. I knew I was about to go make some fucking money. Nigga, when I first got down there, they put me in a trap, nigga. Roaches and everything in that bitch. Told me, nigga, don't leave. All right, just give me a, just give me a game. I'm in this bitch. Nigga, I was in that bitch playing the game, catching snaps, eating McDonald's every day. You know what I'm saying? So hell no, I wasn't nervous, scared, none of that. I was ready, war ready. You hear me? My first run in with the Ohio police. Okay. It was Jackson Township Police. I was with my cousin, told this nigga. Because he had a cell at Motel 6. I told him that. Uh -uh, that ain't feel right. But he kept talking about, you know, dog or whatever. Boo, boo, boo. This one, like, I went on my own out there in Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ventured off on my own shit. Left my people alone. You know, it, wasn't no, it was a whole bunch of bullshit going on. We don't get into that. But uh, we went to the hotel. He sold it to a foreman. And I went down with him. But I ended up beating my case. But I had to sit in the county for like 30 days before that bitch came back. Uh, uh, a no bail. That was 2012. First time I ever bumped into the police. It definitely came a pattern after that. I, uh, I beat that. But I ended up getting swooped that following year. Got raided. Wasn't even a year in. Wasn't even like a year. But it was that next year, probably six months, I got raided, yeah. And after that, I got raided again, and after that, sold to a confidential foreman. So, yeah, it was basically starting to be a pattern. They had me on probation, parole. They sent me back to the county doing a little three days in the county for violations and shit. 2013, when I first caught my first number for trafficking and possession, I got raided. Back in 2013, um, I did two years on that charge. It was possession of heroin and trafficking heroin. F2, felony two. See, in Ohio, they go by levels of felonies. The highest felony is the number one. I had the number two. So it was mandatory time when I got locked up, even though it was my first felony, my first offense. I had to go do two years. It was a mando, too. You hear me? So my first number... I was going through the court system and shit, you know. Before I got sentenced, they let me, I mean, when I got sentenced, they let me stay home for two weeks before I turned myself in. But anyway, my mind stayed me. So before I went in, I'm thinking it's like the movies. I'm going to I'm gonna get tested as soon as I get in this bitch. My know a nigga going to test me. Uh, I'm going to see some gay shit. I'm thinking all negative shit. I'ma see the Aaron Brotherhoods, these racist my boy head with the boats on their head. I'ma see all this shit. It wasn't nothing like that when I first went in that bitch. So I was shook. I wasn't scared because I was turning myself in. Who I'm about to be with, who I'm about to be cool with, hope I don't get no bitch ass monkey or stanky ass motherfucker. Hope I don't bump into no ops. When I first got in there, it wasn't nothing like that though. It was just I mean, it was, but I just learned, like, if you be yourself, you'll be all right. So my, all my business was easy. Felt like fucking daycare. You feel me? Mind your business. Just be yourself. Find a daily routine to make your time go past. Like, a goal that you just know. Like, every morning, you this what you about to do today. You know what time. You know when you go. You know, 
it's just, it's all a mind thing, the prison shit, man. Like, it's all about just getting your mind together and getting through that shit. I used to hoop, work out, write raps, listen to my J player, get on the phone. Everything what average nigga do in prison. I wasn't really no gambler. Shit, my people sending me this money. I ain't about to gamble food. I'm just gonna eat it. That's why all niggas gambling is food. You know what I'm saying? So why would I, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm gonna eat my shit. So nigga, you know, I made sure my bed was it's cool slate if I gotta sit there. I had a TV, I had a player, I had a bitch that was gonna, that was feeding me cheese, money. You know what I'm saying? My sister, you know, I had a smooth bed. You feel me? For sure. I went to prison three times. My first two numbers, I knew I wasn't done with my bullshit. I had to get back to it. Now, my third number, my third number, man, really took a look at me. And right, I'm cool. I never touch that again. Never push what I was selling again to end up back in there. I would never touch prison again. Never. Unless I, unless a nigga do something to my family and I got to put a play down. But I ain't... Doing that no more. Fuck shit, dead. I'll never go back to that motherfucker. Freedom guys, man. I wouldn't wish that shit on my worst enemy. One thing I, I see now is that the music. I mean, I was influenced by thug and gangster music, but it's out of control now. Like, man, the, y'all need to, like, really learn y'all self. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of these young niggas tripping, bro. Like, they ain't fighting no more. They be straight bodying each other. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and I feel like it's the music that got them like that. Because I wasn't, like, listening to... But our music wasn't that gutter to the point that we got to really go slide and killing it. Yeah, we was listening to gangster music and all that, but we weren't talking about the dead, smoking ops and all that type shit. And really going... We weren't going to... Do, you know, and then talk about it in the music. You know what I'm saying? So... This y'all young niggas, like, really find yourself, man. Like, don't let that music shit take control of y'all brain. Don't don't think y'all, you know, like, yeah, you stay dangerous, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, just, there's so much shit in this world, bro. Fuck all that shit, bro. Like, for real, for real. Yeah, rep your gang, rep your hood or whatever, but just be smart, man. Be smart, man. For real. Yeah, we working over here. We, we getting it in one way, shit, for sure. This shit on the flow.